Okay, so now we head into the second half of this course. I hope you are satisfied with your performance in the review test. The most important part of tests, however, is not the studying part before, but the reflection time after. Think about how you studied and what you could do to improve next time. Don't compare yourself to other students. That won't help you at all. That's why I don't tell you the class average. Instead, based on your test score and result, set yourself a new goal for next time and work hard to achieve your new goal. Anyway, let's get back to this week's topic. We're going to look at some short passages about 21st century wonders of engineering. Of course, Japan is well known for its engineering, especially in regards to research surrounding earthquake safe buildings. The picture on this slide has nothing to do with engineering, but it's just a nice picture I took from Mount Coulomb in Australia earlier this year. If you are lucky enough to go to Australia, make sure you go up this mountain. The views are spectacular. All right, let's get into it. So here is what we're going to cover in this unit and video. The Dictogloss activity will be done during class. Make sure you review your reflection notes before class so you will feel more confident to do better next time. I'll show you a link to watch an interesting video about Tokyo Sky Tree. And then I want to talk briefly about the structure and give a piece of advice to further improve your writing skills. After that, it will be the usual text, homework reminder, and finally, we'll have a look at the topic for your turn. Just to let you know, I kind of like the garden in the picture on the right here. I saw this from a hotel I was staying at while in Australia last August. I really thought the design of this garden was kind of cool, with the circles and especially the grass becoming part of the circle design. I wouldn't mind designing the garden at my home something like this. Obviously, it's not as big though. But size isn't everything, is it? Or maybe size is everything. There always seems to be some contest around the world about who has the tallest building or longest bridge, and so on. In 2012, Tokyo Sky Tree opened, in Tokyo of course, and it became the tallest tower in the world, and the second tallest man-made structure in the world after Burj Khalifa in Dubai. I saw Burj Khalifa from the airplane when flying into Dubai this year, and I tell you, it is a very tall building. Anyway, Tokyo Sky Tree. If you haven't been there, here is a short video about Tokyo Sky Tree. If you have been there, have a look at the video anyway. It will remind you of what an amazing structure it is. First, go to YouTube, and this week we are searching in Japanese. Search Asahi Shimbun, Tokyo Sky Tree, Hatsu Kokai. The video should be the top one and has a thumbnail that looks like this but without the people. I guess they used a different picture for their thumbnail. The video is 2 minutes and 27 seconds long. Today's topic is not a lot different to what we did in units 5 and 6. We are describing different items in a particular field. Previously, you may have written about Japanese food or something like that. However, today's structure is going to be a little different because I want you to focus on getting to the point and just giving short descriptions. As always, I want to see an introduction at the beginning and a conclusion at the end. In the middle paragraphs, you can follow a structure that covers the name of the item, 
a short description, and in your description, I'd like to see concrete figures to enable the reader to create a clear image of what you are describing. We'll see this as we read through the text. However, before we get to the text, I'd like to give a piece of advice related to improving your writing skill. Hopefully, you are feeling more confident with your writing, and I can see that you are writing more each week. I am keeping track of how many words you are writing, and the average is going up almost every time. Now, I'd like to see you focus a little more on decreasing how much you write. I don't necessarily mean the total number of words, but rather I'd like you to try to get to the point a little more in your writing. As you improve your English writing and speaking, you will learn more to say what you want to say in fewer words. In this slide so far, I have waffled on a bit so it is not very good and probably a little difficult to follow. I could have improved this slide by just saying, don't beat around the bush and get to the point. Let's look at the text. So straight away we have the introduction. Like I said in the previous unit, it is good to aim for an introduction with a length about 15% of the entire composition. This passage seems to be related to some kind of election of wonders of engineering. The content is very clear here, and in the place of the thesis statement, the writer has explained to readers what he or she wants them to do. This is not a bad introduction. The first of our five wonders of engineering is the Falkirk wheel. At the top of the page, as a subtitle, we see the name, where it is, and when it was completed. Then, as the topic sentence, we have the name again, not it, and a clear, very brief explanation of its purpose. After this, we find more details about the Falkirk wheel. Good use of verbs here helps create a clear image for the reader, and so do the numbers. It's even easier to imagine what it looks like when you have measurements such as 25 meters. What I also like about this paragraph is the last sentence. The writer said that the Falkirk wheel only uses 2 kilowatt hours of energy. That's great. But to tell the truth, I have no idea what that means, and whether that is a lot or just a little. However, in the next sentence, the writer makes a comparison to an everyday object, that is, using a microwave, so that makes it a lot easier to understand. Next, we move on to the Milo Viaduct in France. Once again, the subtitle lets us know at a glance what we are going to read about. There are only three sentences in this paragraph, but we can still learn a lot. Thanks to the numbers, it is easy to create an image of just how long and high this bridge is. Again, the final sentence is a really good way to conclude this paragraph. The writer adds his or her opinion, commenting about the beauty of the bridge. Actually, in an older version of this text, this final sentence read, It is a beautiful bridge that adds to the natural beauty of the river valley. However, it was changed in the latest edition to what you see here. Can you guess why? In the former version, the writer used beautiful and beauty in the same sentence. As much as possible, try to avoid using the same word or similar words, especially adjectives and adverbs, in the same sentence or even paragraph. 
This is just one way you can improve your writing a little more. The third structure is the Langelet pipeline. Now this paragraph isn't quite as good as the others, but I guess it is good to have an example that is not perfect too. It leaves room for improvement. In the topic sentence, for example, rather than saying this pipeline, the author could have used the actual name, the Langelet pipeline, like had been done in previous paragraphs. The use of numbers is pretty good though, so that is okay, but unlike previous paragraphs, there is no final sentence that gives the writer's opinion. With that, let's move on. This is the fourth wonder of engineering. Again, we have the name, place and year of completion in the subtitle. We are back to the name of the structure in the topic sentence, which is great to see. We also have quite a few numbers to explain the measurements, which, as we have discussed, is a great way to help the reader create a clear image of the structure. Kind of similar to the first structure, talking about kilowatts of energy, 39 million cubic meters of water is a little hard to imagine. I would have liked to have seen a comparison or clear explanation here, such as enough water to fill 10 trillion water bottles, or however much it is, just to make it a little easier to imagine. Finally, we have the Venice Tide Barrier. This has been written a little differently. We see a lot about the history and the reasons for building the walls. Once again, there are a lot of figures to help us understand more about the barriers. This is different to how the other paragraphs have been written, so it is another example for you to base your own writing on when it comes to your turn. Just for your information, I read that even though it says here that it is estimated that the barriers will be completed in 2014, a quick search on the internet will tell you that only a couple have been completed. Due to financial problems, the construction of the barriers received a few setbacks, and now it is estimated that they will be finished in 2016. There is not a lot of homework this week, so make sure you have it done and submitted before the due date. Finally, here is our writing topic for this week. Again, this is kind of similar to topics we have done in the past, but this time I'd like you to write about a few more products and focus on getting to the point in your explanations. Avoid using the same topics you have used in the past, and this time, use this opportunity to perhaps even learn something new. Do a little research and write about a different topic, such as varieties of Italian spaghetti, British rock stars in the 1950s, or maybe the top five dangerous plants in the world. There are plenty of interesting topics you could choose from, so have fun with it and teach me something new. Enjoy.